We are reading Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhaniti, continuing verse 26. Mm. Sri Krishna said, O oh, Radhe, <coughs> The musk pictures on your forehead <laughs> repeat the beauty of your curly locks. When a word, subject, or sentence is repeated in a Sanskrit story or book. It is considered to be a fault named Punar Ukti Dosha. Yeah. And the scholars or teachers encircle it with a red pen to indicate the fault. In the same way, Radhika's curly locks encircle her musk decorations to show that there is no, no more need for any more such bumblebee black beauty on her forehead because they her naturally growing bluish curly locks are already there the blue lotus flowers that decorate your ears have become useless in the light of the natural beauty of your eyes. Radhika's eyes are also blue. but more beautifully than even the famous blue Indivada lotus flowers. And the splendor of your slight smile grinds the beauty of your pearl necklace. O oh, Radhe, what is the use of putting on all these decorations of yours when your limbs are already so splendidly beautiful. Splendidly. It's so such a miraculous scene. Mohan's looking at her, and he's seeing himself. He's seeing the blue in her eyes, the blue in the lotus flower on her ears, the blue in her hair. And it's a reminder of the 
the nature of Radha Mohan. They are actually one. They're actually one God, but separated so that that Mohan can relish in himself. And that's exactly what's happening in this little scene. He's relishing by relishing the beauty of Radha. He's relishing his own beauty. In this verse, Sri Rupa Goswami describes Sri Radha's Abhir Rupata, which means that Sri Radha's luster is so wonderful. that all objects of comparison to attain sarupya, the same transcendental form, with it. There is a second sweet meaning. I cannot understand. Yeah, that one as well. <laughs> In this verse, Sri Rupa Goswami describes <laughs> Sri Radha's Abhirupata, which means that Sri Radha's luster is so wonderful that all objects of comparison to it attain Sarupaya. What is Sarupya? Sarupya, what is the meaning? the same transcendental form. By her luster? So... Everything she comes into contact with becomes yeah. beautiful as she is by association. Oh. Mm -hmm. But there is form, is Swaru. Yeah, it's in the word Swarupiya. Yeah. The same transcendental form. Same form. That all objects of comparison, what is comparison? Uh, around. Yeah, all the same, which means they are Attain The same transcendental form. That meaning that all what is uh, come in this luster get swaru. Or no, this is sarupaya, sarupya. This is not swaru, right? Mm -hmm. So, but there is the same transcendental form with it. So did you, get, you understand this? I mean, there's three kinds of perfections that is mentioned in Vaikuntha: the same form, the same 
beauty like this. I think in this uh, it means the same beauty of the form, what she has, what good uh, she says. But we can also ask who did it. That, yeah, that has to be clear. Describe Sri Radha's Abhirupata. Also, it is a, really this quality of form. Is Rupa is, is always meaning form, right? Mm -hmm. Sri Radha's luster. Attain Sarupya. The same transcendental form. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? The same transcendental form. Then her? Maybe spiritual, you know. Or... Okay, so we have to clear this with. Uh... Oh, good yeah. I think it doesn't mean her transcendental form, it means a, a transcendental form. Mm -hmm. Everything in the scene is a transcendental form. But there is the same transcendental form. So, yeah, we can ask Gurudev, I think that would be yeah. best. It's some um, important points. Yeah. Well, the previous sentences are all, are, all, are all basically stating all of these beautiful objects and how they become useless once they get put on Radharani because she's so beautiful that it's like she's actually making them more beautiful. They're not mm. making her more beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes, my, uh, my but the thing same, is the form. Yeah, the, yeah. What is the meaning of that? And the, all the objects of comparison to it attain this. <laughs> but form is, uh, Rupa means form in general way. It doesn't mean necessarily um, the spiritual form or the whole identity, like we say, Svarupa. Svarupa is just form, like the form of an apple or the form of your hand. So it means it has the same appearance, the same shape. I mean, there is nothing is, uh, no one can uh, come close to to her, who is not in the spiritual, right? The material form will not come close to her. It's not possible. Or it's the other way around, that the things that do come close to her become spiritualized. So mm -hmm. that, like, the ornaments, they become transcendental. The ornaments from the lines above, they become transcendental. We ask Gurudev. <laughs> yeah, we have to ask Gurudev. But in the spiritual world, it is not like in the material world. Everything who has a form is already in full consciousness, like we wrote today before yesterday, that uh, the tree there on the banks of Radakund became so much in ecstasy and love and showed that the honey was pouring out of the flowers of that tree. So everything is in full consciousness and full aware in the spiritual world. So here uh, means that that rupa that forms who are already fully conscious any form who comes in contact becomes like it intensifies the qualities and beauty and becomes the same or similar like Radharani's. It is an in intensification of them. So that is what I understand from this. So, sat, Sarupya means 
same form. Sarupya. This word uh, I look up in my dictionary. Means? It means the same form. Well, the same form. <laughs> yes, this was my doubt in this because yeah. uh, form is form. Form is so form. When and this is described that gets the same form, then we have to ask Gurudev yeah. because we, until uh, now, I don't understand it that everything comes close to Radhika, becomes the same form than her. That cannot be the meaning of this. Yeah. Because Radha is already Radha. We, we not uh, all become one. We stay in an in individual form to serve her. But the same. So Radhika will not serve Radhika. Yeah. Maybe it's the form in mood. In mood and in qualities. Yeah, close to her yeah. life. Or but in now. Form. And in feelings. But we have to ask. I you. think we are in speculation. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, this is a this is a wonderful opportunity, you know, to really go deep, because when our when we get challenged with something like this, we have to surrender, right? <laughs> if we try to wrap our mind around it, it's like yes, it's like uh, in Damodar Lila, you know, Yashodama is trying to wrap the rope around Krishna. She always comes up short, you know. But uh, if I can just add my bit of speculation here. <laughs> um, so we say like Manjaris are the shadows of Radharani. So the shadow of an object is the same form. If we're looking at the silhouette or we're looking at the, <clears throat> you know, the form, that's the shadow is the form. So when we totally surrender, in service to Shamati Radharani as Manjaris, we, in a sense, take on her form, her beauty, her loving capacity, everything is transferred to us. This kind of starts to blend into guna, as we just mentioned. The guna, though, is different meaning. It means quality. So there's a difference between form and quality. If they wanted to say guna, they would say guna, but here they're saying rupa. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu being totally, um, <clears throat> you know, this avatar representing this Halini Shah, he took the form of Shimati Radharani, right? You know, it's said many times, he took the, on the bodily luster, he took the form of Shimati Radharani. So <clears throat> maybe this is also, you know, referring to his his activities. Um, but I think if we read on, we might get some hint about this a little bit. But thank you so much. Thank thank you. You. To be continued. We appreciate it. There is a second sweet meaning to the phrase Madura Chabi Rupa Sade transcending the primary one. There is nothing as sweet in the whole world as love and that sweet love constantly gushes <laughs> from Radha's lustrous and beautiful transcendental form. <clears throat> Anyone who encounters this form of Sri Radha will be blessed with prema without further endeavor. This to understand, this is, we got the example of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was uh, in the jungle uh, and only by his transcendental luster, the animals got 
uh, in this, uh, what is it, in this, uh, yes, they got this prema only by his luster. There is nothing to explain, no need to speak, only by his, um, audience, how to say, uh, his presence yeah. in the, in the jungle, he, he was walking through the jungle and he was in ecstasy and dancing and loudly singing the holy name of the Lord. And so, by his luster and his energy, the animals around him start to dance and try to sing the holy names with their voices. We know this description, so there is easy to meditate on this, what you just read. If we come into contact of this luster, then it's finished with to ex any explanations. We can switch off the mind, or the mind will switch off automatically. No more thinking, there is prema, and prema is a feeling automatically that will enter our whole existence so that we will also start to dance and to sing like the animals in the jungle. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is what Mahaprabhu left. He left that what he was singing, the holy names, Mahamantra, in this world, and he also left a glimpse of his luster to Rupa, to Raghunath, and also to Prabodhanandaji. And in this line, the, the glimpse of the luster is still there in the form of the Gurudev, of our Gurudev, we can say this. And so, we can feel this when we come close to him. Then all here start to sing and to dance. And we can enter in this origin, intense luster of Mahaprabhu. And this is not different from the luster of our Swamini, because it's her luster. Very nice point. And I also was just remembering that our meditation, uh, it is explained that it has different intensities. It starts with smaran, and then it goes into daran and dhyan, until it reaches samadhi. So, actually samadhi is also this point of oneness. So this, um, all our services, all what we are doing and when we are hearing and chanting, it's meant to come closer. It's meant to become touched and yeah, closer is the word. And when I come closer in any way possible, not only externally, but especially with my feelings, with my desires, and then the manifestation of, of grace will come from, from our Swami. And she comes in this age through or as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But at the same time, Guru says that when we go inside and we are we are connecting with our feelings, our hearts, and our desires. Then the contact is done, and by this contact, all of my existence or all of my being is transformed into spiritual uh, energy or love. So that 
I was just meditating when we were sharing. <clears throat> I love the phrase at the end of the sentence, without further endeavor. So nothing to do on mm. our behalf. Mm. There's nothing, there's no prescription, no formula mm. we can do. It's not that if we chant a certain number of rounds or mm. serve a num certain number of plates of prem prashad or something to do to attain this prema. Only by encountering the form of Sri Radha, you will be blessed with Prema. So then how to encounter this form? This is our desire. If we desire this, if this becomes our sole desire, our only focus. This is also what is the uh, meaning of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings. Achintya Veda Veda Tattva. This is a uh, same time different and also uh, uh, together, right? One. Mm -hmm. One, one. So in the feelings and uh, we have a oneness because we have to know what is her desire mm -hmm. and we have to know what is necessary just now. And to know that we have to be like one. We, we read her mind like this. Now, I can read your mind. I know exactly what you in the next moment will do. And I also know what is the feeling of Moha. Because that fits together. If I don't know what he liked, then I don't know what she liked. So that is the oneness. But at the same time, we are also different because we are not her. We are the servants of her. So that means one and different. Mm. And this is the beauty of Mahaprabhu's shine appearance. 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 Yeah. Very nice. And I really appreciate what Suniti said too. And let's put them together because you two are Gauras and Suniti are uh, incomprehensible oneness and difference also <laughs> but um how do we know it yes we have to know this as you say how do we know it well we know it by the process that you need to describe and then all we need is one gland, one one drop of it like as mahatmaji described we only need one single glimpse or glance at Radha, and we know it. We know everything. One moment, one instant of mercy. And we know. Then we know what Radha wants, we know what Mohan wants, we know who we are. It's just that one moment of being together with her, and that happens through the, the process of bhajan, like we do it. Because the process of bhajan takes us to our own svarup. And when we reach our own svarup, then we find Swamini there. Oh, now I understand. By this glimpse, we get the svarup. You're right. And this glimpse is the mercy of the Guru. Yes. He is giving this photo. When he is the glimpse of this mercy, of this, what is it? Lavanya. Uh, this the luster. Luster of Swamini. Uh, From his lotus feet, this glimpse is coming and we get this photo. You're right, Udapji. Very beautiful. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
Sriman Mahaprabhu descended to earth to bless everyone with this gift of prema. Sri Jiva Goswami writes in his Krama Sandarbha commentary on the Bhagavata verse 11. 532 Krishna will be revealed to everyone who sees his Mahaprabhu's luster hmm. that he took from Sri Radha. So not only not only that we relish Radhika, now we also relish Krishna. Because we relish him through Radhika. This is what Gurudev always explained, right? We relish Mohan because we can relish Narayan like everybody is doing. My aesthetic form of God. But Krishna will only appear to Radhika's eyes. Because his sweetness is only in Vrindavan. And whole Vrindavan see Mohan through Radhika's eyes, the eyes of love. This is not the eyes of respect and reverence. I mean, there is also respect, but it's uh, the love is always dominant. It's always more than respect. And it's even complete different because Radhika's eyes see Mohan that he is her Mohan. You are my and uh, in Vaikuntha and all other places, I'm yours, take care of me. You are the God. You have this responsibility to take care of everyone and everything. But here, God himself can be in the sweet form of Moha because he is her moha. Jai Shri Radhe. Yes. Shri Radha is also the essence of cleverness and artful expertise. Vaidagya? Is that right? Hmm? Vaidagya? Mm -hmm. Even Sri Krishna, the teacher of all arts, cannot swim across this ocean of Radha's artful cleverness. Srimad Rupa Goswami writes in his Premendu Sudha Satra She is the first teacher of cleverness. And she is adorned with beautiful expertise. Wow. 
What is meaning of cleverness? Love is cleverness. Because it's prema. It's the result of this love. And there is nothing higher to attend than this prema, right? So everyone who is clever will find this prema. And there is nothing more, nothing higher. In, there is no place we find more than this prema. This is the fulfillment of all desires of the souls. And so, in her is the complete cleverness, because through her we will find this prema. And so, even Mohan is searching for this. He finds in this prema the whole rasa, sweetness, juice. There is nothing higher for him even. So this is meaning of, of cleverness. Mm -hmm. And we also have to be clever to find this. And where to find? To Radhika. We follow her like a shadow. Because we know she is cleverness in person. In her we find love and praying. Wow. Finito. Yeah. Rasa also. Seva Ras. Joy. Joy in this frame. So she is complete cleverness. Shripad, Baladev, Vidya Bhusana writes in his commentary, All cleverness and artfulness, like dancing and so, originally comes from the primeval teacher, Sri Radha. All these arts are blessed in her service. Mm -hmm. yeah. She is expert in all the arts of meeting with Krishna, mm -hmm. such as seeing, speaking, touching, stopping the way, Raslila, water sports, boating pastimes, playing dice, mm -hmm. drinking honey, pretending to sleep, <laughs> pulling at the dress, pulling, like, pulling. <laughs> drinking, the nectar of the cherry-like lips and sexual intercourse. O 
boating? Is there a boat? Is there a boating, Leela? Yeah, it would describe. I mean, not specially. Boating, I also heard. Yeah, oh, boating. Yeah, yeah, multiple pastimes. Oh, okay. But it started with service, right? Mm. Can you? Yeah, again, she is. All these arts are blessed in her service. You see. And this is the special thing that Mohan himself is searching for this service. Mm. He is trying to massage her feet and to make the foot lag. We remember he was not able to do this. <laughs> he become shivering because he is not this in the mood of the maid servant, they can do, they have the expertise. But he, he is have, he doesn't have the her. skill, yeah. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the expertise. Right. Because <laughs> his uh, his rasa is different. He is he he is desiring uh okay. enjoying. So he has not this seva mood, but he is desiring the service. <laughs> And uh, uh, Manjaris has the expertise, but she is the, also the teacher of him. She is always teaching him to dance and to do this and that. <laughs> Love teacher in every circumstance, she is teaching him. But only the Manjaris are able to do this seva in the. So sometimes they say, "Okay, Mohan, go." You are not able to do this get properly. Out get out. <laughs> this is very special. But this, maybe you can read again this. Yeah. She is expert in all the arts of meeting with Krishna. Such as seeing, speaking, touching, stopping the way, Ras Lila, water sports. Boating pastimes, playing dice, drinking honey, pretending to sleep, pulling at the dress. Mm. Drinking the nectar of the cherry like lips and sexual intercourse. At least here we can understand that this is only to relish in a, in a spiritual form. Otherwise, this will mix with lust and then all is to finish. Gurudev said kaput. So we have to be very careful to relish these with through the spiritual eyes. And for this we need this spiritual form. We cannot think about this by the material eyes and lust and senses. We need spiritual body and senses. Yeah. Yes. Actually, what we can, actually we can relish this only if we have a spiritual body as a manjari, as Siddhanta before 
very nicely said, the Manjari is the shadow of Radha, like a shadow. So because of this, they are so much expert in serving Radha, because they have the same feelings and emotions like Radharani has, because they are so much connected and they know exactly what to do and what she wants. And to relish this, as Guru Sundara said, this is not, uh, we cannot do this, this within uh, a material conception, identifying with our material body and our material senses. Therefore, we should cultivate our spiritual body. Govardhan, as Gurudev says, is increasing the senses, but our spiritual senses within our spiritual body. And only then we can relish this. Otherwise, it will be not possible. We will misunderstand this and comparing it to the lost in the material world. But actually, all this has nothing to do with that because it is happening in the spiritual world and it is about prema, about love. And this love and prema we can relish only in a spiritual body. And our seva as a manjari we can do with our manjari body. Only then we have uh, access to the kunja and only the manjaris can be there and only they can do all these expert sevas that uh, also Krishna is not able to do, as it was said, because he is the enjoyer. And as an enjoyer, his hand is trembling when he has to decorate the breast of Radha or he has to put on the foot leg. And only the manjaris as they are seeing this, that he is not capable of it, only they can tell him like that to leave and go. We will do, go. You are not capable to do. Only they can do that. No one else is allowed to behave like that. But this is because they have their only focus is the exclusive service to Srimati Radhika and they have no desire to be with Krishna because they fully know that it is Radha's Krishna, it doesn't belong to us. This is Manjari Bhav. It's not like the gopis. The gopis, they want also to be with Krishna. They have the similar or same desire as Radha. Because of that, they are the girlfriends of Radha. But when she is meeting with him within the Kunja, they cannot be there. Radharani would not allow, she don't like this when they are seeing the intimate things. Only the Manjaris are allowed to be there and she is hiding them, but they can remain. And everything what is needed at the moment, immediately they will know what Seva is required and they will do, they are always available. So then we have to know and realize who is the enjoyer. All of us have this tendency to be the enjoyer because of our predominant Purusha Abhiman within us. And to become a servant means that we are surrendering to Gurudev, who then can navigate us towards the goal and thus becoming uh, Prakriti, that we are cultivating the female energy within us, means of loving and caring, means becoming the viewer and the servant. As long as we think that we are the doer, then we are in our male consciousness. So becoming the viewer means to go in our female 
consciousness what we are in our constitutional position in our case as a manjari female maid servant of Srimati Radhika. I, see, I feel that I experienced this in a much simpler way. Um, this idea about the ox. I would say, yes, we can only experience, relish these arts when we're in Swarup. But I would say it a little bit differently that when we are experiencing art, we are in Swarup. And that we mustn't, it's not necessary to wait until we've fully found ourselves in Asvarup and then left the body and entered the spiritual world in order to have these experiences of art. That experiences of, of beauty, experiences of feeling, are actually the sign of the presence of our soul, the presence of our spiritual body presence of Asvaru, hints of it, signs of it, that when we're in our everyday lives and we feel the transcendence of artistic um, expression, then that is actually a moment when we're just a little bit in Asvaru. And that that's why these are the experiences that we have to follow. Like the scent of cooking, we follow it to its source. So what's special about all these arts in the list is that, that the list that Mahatma Ji read there is that they all help us to transcend the material. Yes, we have to be careful not to confuse them with lust, as was said. Yes. But all of them are things that help us to transcend the material, material experience. And this is what happens to us when we're doing, when we're doing our sadhana. Yes, I agree with this. This is uh, all the beauty that we are seeing in the arts and everything we see in the material world. It's like uh, uh, a semblance from the spiritual world so we can see all these things are originally coming from radharani from the mm -hmm. spiritual world in that connection we can see it like that but what it is uh, the topic here that is happening what it is happening in the spiritual world and i would say that that is the real thing and what we have here in the material world it's like a semblance of that we can see this example of Vila Prabhupada and also our Raghunath Das that they are in this world sitting body, but at the same time, they are absorbed in the spiritual world, same time. But there they are really in their spiritual form, and uh, in this world, everything is under control of the three gunas. This is uh, Suniti, you know this, three gunas is Satya, Sattva? Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Rajas and Tamas. Means Tamas is ignorance, Rajas is passion, and Sattva is uh, goodness. goodness. Yeah, and uh, so, and these uh, gunas are under control of demigods. And even the demigods are in the material world. 
They are not part of the spiritual world. For example, um, Tamagun is controlled by Shiva. And to remove the Tamagun, we go, Shiva, please remove this from our heart. Before we go in the temple, Radha Mohan, we go Shiva temple. Please remove this ignorance from our heart because we will not understand Radhika and Mohan sweetness if our heart is filled with ignorance. And the same is with Rajagun, that means passion. Who is the controller of the Rajagun? Who knows? It's Brahma. He is the Shatva, what says this? Creator. He is the creator. So he needs this. We also need this in this world. We need all this. If we like to build a house, we need some energy. And then uh, the third one, Satvagun, is under control of, of Vishnu, of a Vishnu form. And uh, he is the maintainer. He is maintaining everything. But even this Satvagun is a part of the material world. So these three gunas are controlling us. We are switching from Tama to Raja and mix, and sometimes <laughs> Sattva <laughs> and mix. So these gunas will always control these bodies because these bodies have senses, different senses, right? This is uh, also subtle senses like the mind, the intelligence, and there is one more, the false ego. Subtle, we cannot touch. For example, my hand, there is a sense to touch. I can touch this, I can feel this, but the ego I cannot touch. He's hiding somewhere, I don't know where, maybe in the mind, but also the mind I cannot see. But for sure, they are all con under control of the three gunas. So, everything what belongs to this material world will be controlled from the gunas, from the false ego, from the intelligence and the mind. And this is un not possible to mix this with the spiritual. The spiritual world is completely different, and we get the spiritual body really by the mercy of Radhika. How is this possible? We can see in our line, there is Nityananda. Yeah. Same time, Ananga Manjari. Who is Ananga Manjari? She is the one who will enter the material world to do what Radhika desire. She is actually an uh, explanation of Radhika. And who is giving us all this mercy? Where it's coming from? She our life. Mahaprabhu, Nityananda, Ananga Manjari, and so on. So, the source of this mercy of the spiritual body is 100% is Radhika. <coughs> She is giving everything. She is inviting us. And she is giving this form. Who is telling us from our body, our spiritual body, the form, the age, how old we are, the color of our skin, the color of our clothes, the kunja, we are doing the seva. It's giving, it's a mercy of the Guru Dev, and he is connected in the Parampara till Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is the connection between the material world and the spiritual world. And then the mercy is coming because she is also the master of compassion. Cool. It's described here in the books. 
We read yesterday, I think. Essence of compassion. The essence of compassion. Because she is the essence of compassion, she knows all these things around us from the <laughs> material world. And because we was those who desire to control, and because of this desiring to control, to be like God, we got this form also. It's also mercy. The human body is a mercy to do what the soul desired. We got it depending on our desires. So, Jai Ho, we have a body. <laughs> but Swamini also knows <laughs> simultaneously that this not really belongs to the soul because it's somehow it's an illusion, a maya. It needs the maya because this body is temporary, <coughs> right? But the quality of the soul is not temporary, it's eternal. So because of this, it needs again and again and again a new body. And that means also suffering. Yeah, when we, uh, all our relatives will, will go. Like we saw last week, yesterday we celebrated a, a festival that the soul of, of Mataji could leave, could go. And so we see there is suffering because the bodies are leaving us, our relatives who we love will leave this world and left us behind. So we are crying sometimes, a mother or brother or who will, whoever will leave us, make us very sad. And because of this suffering, Swamini shows her mercy towards us and try to change our mood from the controlling mood to the service mood. And if we agree with this, that we want to be a, a servant and not a controller, we will get a spiritual body with different kind of senses. And this body is not under control of the three gunas. This body is controlled by love, by service mood. And these senses are not under control of the subtle false ego or intelligence or mind. These senses are controlled by towards the feelings to our Swamini. She is the teacher here. She is in, under all circumstances. We have even not the idea of a desire of selfishness. Is it right? Selfishness. Of, uh, selflessness. Of, of enjoyment. We, we find our enjoyment is really the service we do towards her. And if we feel that she is happy, this is our enjoyment. And if we feel that Mohan is happy, that is her happiness, her enjoyment. So we, we are uh, really a central uh, part of, of the enjoyment of the Yuga Lakishore. Okay. Really, the Manjaris are very important. And so we got the invitation <coughs> really from her. She came in this world as Mahaprabhu. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Without Mahaprabhu, we will not get this form. Mm -hmm. There will not be the Guru who gives this form. Gurudev is not there without her mercy. Nityananda will not come. All depends on the compassion, mood and of our Swamini. It's so beautiful to meditate where the root of all this she is the root of mercy, the root of love, the root of all arts. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. She is really, she is our heart and soul. Jai Ho. <laughs> Very beautiful explanation, Gura Sundra. <laughs> and uh, the thing is that we are not neglecting this material body and to come out from the influence of these three modes of material nature 
it's a very simple thing that we are engaging our body, mind and intelligence in the service of Radha. So then our body, our senses and our mind becomes spiritualized and we can use this Sadaka Deha to make further progress in our spiritual life. And with uh, our practice and by the mercy of Gurudev, we can start to cultivate our spiritual body because actually all these Leelas in these wonderful books, uh, as Radharani sometimes is called, Oh, moon-faced girl, this is like a moon shining and the moon is cooling. So with the Smarana remembrance of all these beautiful Leelas, we can cool down the heat of our mind and lead the mind towards the spiritual world. And by engaging all our senses, our time that we have and meditate, for example, when we are cooking, we are not cooking for ourselves and for our own sense gratification. We are cooking for, for Radha Mohan and giving, making a nice preparations and nice offering. And then we will take the remnants who is the prashad. And the prashad is something very intimate because it was touched by the lips of Radha Mohan. And so we can make a lip to lip connection with, which is very, very intimate. So this is depending on us, on our desire and where we are leading our consciousness through in what we are doing and how we are doing it. So it means with which attitude that we have and it doesn't matter what we are doing. This is uh, where, sorry, where we are doing this in our day to day life. For example, also how we behave with other people, how we behave with the other devotees and try to remove all these unwanted things from our heart. And this is very simply done by the chanting of this Hare Krishna mantra, who is purifying the heart from all the unwanted things so that this love can become, can manifest in our heart. <laughs> and only then, if we are open ourselves up to this path, then we can get the mercy of Gurudev who is always there. This mercy is always there, but we are not ready to get the mercy because of our own blockages, because we are blocking ourselves from that, because we cannot surrender ourselves. We cannot be servants because we think we are the doer, we are the enjoyer. So we have to adjust our mentality and our attitudes. And this is a very subtle thing because we can give up maybe very easily all our gross uh, sense enjoyment, but the subtle things are very difficult to give up, like name, fame, glory, to be glorified and all these things. These are very subtle anartas, subtle things in the heart, who are not so easy uh, removed. <laughs> so for me, at least I can say there is a lot of work to do. But the nice thing is if we remain within the process, everything will become fine, will be fine. Jai Sri Ram. <laughs> Yeah, we have one more, one more paragraph.
And finally, <laughs> Sri Radha is the quintessence of everything essential. Sri Govinda is the essence of everything. And Sri Radha is the quintessence of everything for him. And the essential topics are explained before. These different kinds of art, compassion mode, these are the essentials, right? Yeah. To understand this, that in the spiritual world there is no meaning of any IQ. Is it <laughs> IQ? Yeah. Intelligence, like we have in this world, how to contain a lot of information. The essence of Radhika's expertise and so on is really the feelings, and this is what the Mohan is experience. This is meaning of essentials, of arts, and how would have she said, and so on and so on. No? And even boating is there a, a deep meaning. Boating. What is the meaning of boating in the material world? Okay, it's nice, <laughs> maybe, to do some, but it's a essential art. And she is the expertise, expert, expert of this. Boating. <laughs> boating. It's a, it's a, like we have universe. Yeah. Uh, not, not universe, uh, university. Yeah. To, uh, to study something, but there is this. There is a boating is like something who can study on the uni uh, on on a university. But boating could also mean navigating. Boating, a boat you have to navigate. Oh, they have the lila there in the boat. This is this. You know this lila is yeah. described, and yeah. and this is the meaning of this boating. Because she is the expertise, how make Mohan happy in that boat. In the boating. This is boating, and yeah. the Marjorie's are. <laughs> yeah. know, we have a beautiful picture. Suniti so has got a. She was very desiring to for this picture, and that was a really a beautiful Swamini was crowned by the Manjaris and she was in that boat. So I have to send you. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. really not. But boating, <laughs> so you see. Sorry. No, no. And what is the the meaning, the intention behind all these pastimes, the boating, the water sports, the seeing, the speaking, the touching? It's to increase the feelings, mm. increase the desire mm. between Rana mm. and Mohan. Yeah. And also to increase our own desire to view that as manjaris and to be engaged in the seva. This boat was uh, was full with flower, decorate, beautiful, in a beautiful lake, and swans around there. And that was such a beautiful scene, and all was in uh, uh, beautiful clothes. And Swamini was crowned by a, a flower uh, crown made by the maid servants, and so it's so beautiful. Yes, it's, uh, we have a word for this also. It's called emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, yeah. This is the intelligence of the soul. The soul no need any knowledge because it is Satchit Ananda. It's, all knowledge is there. 
there is no meaning from some material knowledge because the quality is eternal. So all our knowledge is surrounding to maintain a material body. You see, they fly to the moon to to find there some gold or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, but the reason is to to get something to maintain somebody or to become rich or to become controller, all these. But the soul don't need anything. Do the soul need food? Really? No. Right? Soul food is different. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. So, soul, the food of the soul is love. This is the soul is searching for the love, for prema. This is knowledge. This is the quintessence. The quintessence. You want to finish? No, no. This is perfect. <laughs> Yes, what I meant when I said body, mind, engaging, and intelligence means that uh, we use the intelligence in a proper way mm. to distinguish uh, from what is favorable and what is unfavorable and to make the right decisions yeah. and to fix the goal. And this is cleverness. This is cleverness. Mm. And this is what Gurudev explained. Not to swim, but to dive. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No? Yeah. To, he made a very nice example of the river. And when you put a piece of wood in the river, it floats. So we don't have to do any endeavor. No endeavor. We go in the flow and then we will flow. It's, and then he says always, it's so simple. It's very simple. And Prabhupada always says also, very simple process. Wow. And then what you said, sorry, one more thing. Uh, Prabhupada was reading the other day. Uh, we are working in this material world like asses only to solve the bread problem. He said, the bread problem, the body problem. But actually, we have the richest father. So why do we have to bother for our bread problem? We don't have to bother. <laughs> Radharani will provide with everything. If we are sincere in our doings and are surrendered and are really try to establish a, a deep relationship with our Gurudev, with our God sisters and God brothers and all the Vaishnavas and devotees and everyone who is receptible, then how we why we have to bother for anything? Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. We don't have to bother. <laughs> she will provide and she's doing already she's feeding her babies with her own breast yeah yeah so we have to become babies and Prabhupada added something more he said uh, human life means we are relaxed peaceful sitting and inquiring about God, he says, or about spiritual life. That is human life. Not to work like asses the whole day for solving the bread problem. That is not human life. <laughs> if it's your nature, you can also work like this, but don't work for yourself, sense gratification. Yeah. Work for Swamini. Yeah. This is no problem. You can work like mad. Yes, yep. this doesn't mean we don't have to work, because our work can also be our seva, if right. we seem like that. But he was referring to the materialistic society, what they are doing the whole day, only having this in mind. Something left? Yep. <laughs> it is said, 
that Govinda is the life of life because of his pastimes forms attributes good fortune amorous leelas and so on and he is the essence of everything but still Sri Radha is the life and the essence of Govinda. Jai Ho. So we can see in this description, Govinda is very important. He has everything and is very expert in anything. But then Radha is like more important. Same as 10.15, when I go to his favorite in Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Sripad prays, let my mind dwell in the jewel of qualities named Sri Radha. Jai Ho. Beautiful. Very nice. Sri Pat is praying for this. So how much more we should pray for this? We should pray for this, that this can manifest within our heart so that we can have access to this wonderful world. That these feelings can come to us, we can feel this. Do you live there? <coughs> Do I go there? What is this G? Oops. Because we had this one question because of the form, but we can also ask. Yeah, we'll keep this in mind. No? Yeah. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. Jai Radhe, thank you so much. It's very, very intense and very deep uh, realizations about everything, and uh, it just has really filled my heart and my mind um, with um, just this essence, right? They're talking about the essence. What is the essence means? What is essential? Essen means Latin to be, right? So to be, to exist, mm -hmm. means we have to be knowing what is essential, what is necessary, what is not necessary. And what we get from this class is the only thing we need in this world is just this, to be this Radhadasi. And then everything mm -hmm. is complete. Jai Ho! Thank you Best so much. Sense. Jai! Swindersense! <laughs> you see, the ashram is uh, getting full. Filling it. Filling. Many devotees now coming and now, in the next days, I think some uh, Japanese uh, devotees coming, right? Yeah. And what about the Shraddha, <coughs> the Shraddha ceremony? It's happening now? Today? It, it finished yesterday. Yesterday. Finished. Yes. Uh -huh. And how was it? Wow. Very nice. Very nice. The whole family was there. There was uh, the priest was there. And we had three time full meal. <laughs> you can imagine uh, how I feel today. Oh my, God. <laughs> my, li my liver is jumping. <laughs> <laughs> today is the Kadashi. Today is also a Kadashi, which I hope. 
Oh, I see. Yeah. It's all nectar, all nectar, all nectar. All nectar. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we met ma many uh, family members we not saw before uh, of the family and all uh, the children was there, but uh, Niti was is still in, in, uh, in Delhi, but uh, our Chaitanya Prem, he made uh, the whole time video so she could be also there somehow. No? So but nice. though one son of Raja came from the US, yeah. what was his name? Who remember? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 know this boy. Yeah, I know this boy, I forgot his name. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, yes. Yeah, most inspiring for me was when Gurudev spoke uh, in front of all uh, about Mataji's wonderful qualities. Mm -hmm. And he said, We are lucky. Uh, or he feels lucky that he has such a good partner for spiritual development because when he was living in Munger, that was more in the palace. No? In Bihar, they have also a big palace. And then he said, uh, we will go to Vrindavan and they had two children. And here, this uh, Munger Mandir was very much uh, simple living, no... Uh, high At that time, no? yes, same size, but no, no renovation. It no, was yeah. a real. Uh, I can problem. just imagine. Yeah, it must have been beautiful. <clears throat> and she was always cooperating with him, and she was always never complaining. And so Gurudev was thanking her for the beautiful uh, partnership in with the spiritual goal, and he said that we can be very thankful in our lives. If we have a partnership, we have relations that will help us to live our spiritual lives, that I like very much. Yes. And one day they had even, he ex uh, explained this, they had no money for medicine, mm -hmm. and both had uh, malaria. Oh my God! You can imagine how much suffering was there in these days. Oh, and it's a a great endeavor, is it? Endeavor to start such a spiritual life mm. without a double net. You know what is meaning double net? You, if there is a in the yeah jumping on the, on the and then there is normally is a net safety net. Like, when you your safety net, when you fell down, you fell in the net, but uh, there was no net, and so it was really a hard time for both. And he described this very nice without any uh, uh, hiding things. He's not hiding. He is open speaking to the whole family, yeah. everyone who was there, and uh, that was really was heißt ehrlich. Sincere, honest. honest and sincere, how he do this, and uh, yeah, and he only uh, showed the good side of her. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's amazing. <clears throat> yeah, I've I met her almost twenty five years ago. She spent a lot of time in the states, so whenever I went to visit Priya, sure, but she was always there, so humble, so sweet. You know, I have so many nice memories of her from for many years. So. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't be there yesterday, but when you're talking about these partnerships, I don't have to look any farther uh -huh. than my dear Gaur Sundar and Suniti to see this same loving relationship and mutual support. It's so beautiful. You're a great example. And also my dear Mahatma Ji and Sadhvi Ji also. My God, such a beautiful, loving partnership and now bringing a child into this world. I really... <clears throat> much adoration and so much love for all of you really yeah uh, really you're sweet. right we miss you also yeah <laughs> we miss you also I'm, there. Yeah. I'm always there with you always there yeah. 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 Yeah.